Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'll be sharing my time with the member for Thunder Bay, Rainy River. I'm proud to rise today to speak during this emergency take-up debate in the House of Commons on Ukraine and Russia's military invasion. A couple of days ago, I was joined by several of my colleagues in requesting this emergency take note debate in the House of Commons. We felt it was important as it provided an opportunity for members of all parties, of all parts of the country, to speak to this issue, to discuss Canada's and the international community's response to what's happening in Ukraine. And I'd like to thank all parties for their support of that motion to have this emergency take note debate. During our last take note debate, I shared a story with all of you about my grandfather, Ivan that I was with him when Ukraine declared its independence, that he was a great patriot, that when Ukraine declared its independence, it might have been the proudest day of his life. That my grandfather said to me that day that now that Ukraine is independent, we have to keep up the fight for Ukraine's independence. I was 14 years old at the time, and I said, Dito, what are you talking about? Ukraine's declared its independence, the people want it, the world has recognized it. I said, you are wrong. And I was wrong. In 2014, Russia twice invaded Ukraine in Crimea and eastern Ukraine. In 2014, the world did not do enough. They didn't impose enough sanctions. They didn't send weapons. They didn't do enough to support Ukraine and to deter an invasion. Now, Vladimir Putin has begun an unprovoked, full-scale invasion of Ukraine. He has attacked the entire country, and not just the soldiers defending Ukraine's borders, but he's targeting and killing civilians men, women, children. He's bombing buildings, and he's bombing kindergartens, and much more. Civilians are dying as we speak. The courage of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian armed forces have been inspiring. Mm -hmm. And it's not just soldiers who are fighting courageously. It's men, women, people of all ages, seniors are taking up arms. They are outnumbered, and they are outgunned, but they keep fighting. And they're holding the line against a much larger, much more well-armed military. In Ukrainian, we say, Slava Ukraini, Heroyam Slava. This means glory to, the, glory to Ukraine and glory to the heroes. I think we can all agree that Ukrainians are living up to those words right now. For those of us with, for those of us with Ukrainian ancestry, this touches us personally. But this is something that concerns all Canadians. It's a humanitarian crisis. We see not just the soldiers being killed, but the civilian, civilians being killed, civilians displaced, civilian communities being bombed. This is an attack on Ukraine's sovereignty, but it's also an attack on democracy in, in the international rules-based order. It's a threat not just to Ukraine's security, but to Europe's security, to the world's security, and Canada's security. Ukrainians are fighting bravely. And yes, they're fighting for their freedom. They're fighting for their homeland. But they're also fighting for something else. They're fighting for all of us. Today, this impacts all of us. This affects all our security. It affects democracy around the world. It affects global security. Today, they are fighting for all of us. Today, we are all Ukrainian. The Ukrainians are fighting for us. The Ukrainians are fighting for us, and we need to fight for them. And that is why Canada and its allies must do everything possible to stop this invasion and to ensure Russia withdraws from Ukraine. Now, Canada has taken a tremendous number of steps along with our allies. We've, today, we banned crude oil exports. We, provided, we, announced, the, the announce, we announced that we're going to provide additional lethal weapons to Ukraine, anti-tank tank weapons and other rockets and other systems that, they, that Ukrainians have requested. We've asked, we will ask, we've announced that we will ask CRTC to review RT's presence on our airwaves. We need to get rid of RT in Canada. We've previously provided two shipments of weapons. We've trained over 30,000 Ukrainian soldiers who are fighting so bravely as we speak right now. And we've imposed a tremendous number of sanctions against Vladimir Putin, his oligarchs, and on the central bank, and much more. And these sanctions are having a significant impact. But it won't be enough. It won't be enough until Vladimir Putin is stopped, until Ukraine is free. Today, this House unanimously supported my motion, which called upon Canada to do a number of things, including continuing to impose sanctions, the provision of additional support to the government of Ukraine and the Ukrainian armed forces, 
issuing an additional order, uh, an order around to the CRTC around RT and, and, and broadcasting policy, and the removal of Russia from SWIFT from the payment system. We have to keep working until we stop Vladimir Putin, until the Ukrainians win. They are fighting for us. In 1991, that day with my grandfather, I was wrong. In 2014, the world was wrong. There is too much at stake. Ukraine's security is Europe's security, and it's Canada's security. Ukrainians are fighting bravely for our freedom, but they're also fighting for us, and we need to fight for them. Today, we are all Ukrainian. Today, everyone in the free world is Ukrainian, and today, we can all say, Slava Ukraini, Heroem Slava. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes.